welcome back to Riker Rides. Um, today's version is Spider Rides. I am working on installing a new sway bar on a spider uh, RT. Scott, what year is your spider? 21? 21. A 2021 spider RT. We did this one last week. It's a his and her spider family. So we did this RT last week. And now we're gonna be working on that RT in the garage. So this is the old sway bar that came off of it. So there's a lot of questions on why do you wanna switch out your sway bar? So I'm gonna give you my little speech on it, but feel free to get on the Facebook pages and type in sway bar. You're gonna get so much information and every single time you check on it and every time you look on it, you're going to see the same name coming up over and over again, Baha Ron. He is your sway bar guy. He's been doing it for years and years and years. I'll call him and find out the exact amount of years he's been doing this, but he is the expert on sway bars. So I have done an install video for the Riker sway bar. And people ask me all the time, why do I want to switch out the sway bar? And what is the difference that it makes? And it's really, and I had a whole conversation when I interviewed Ron at his shop, and I had a whole conversation with him, how do you describe it to somebody? And we both are like dumbfounded because it's one of those things that's hard to explain the benefit of a sway bar until you actually experience it. You don't know how awesome it is until you try it. So what a sway bar, which it really should be named anti-sway bar. The purpose of a sway bar is to, and your bike comes with a sway bar. So this isn't an add-on. This is a upgrade. So your bike does come with, Can-Am does supply you with a sway bar and it does work. So I'm not knocking Can-Ams, but Baja Ron sway bar is just made with a better um, type of aluminum. And the links is what the biggest thing is. The links for, for the Can-Am links are plastic. And they're very hard in terms of moving. And the Baja Ron are made out of aircraft aluminum, which allows you the, the joints in there move. You know, it, just, it makes it a much smoother ride. So it should be called a little bit windy today. So it should be called the anti sway bar because it keeps your bike from from kind of from being uneasy while you're riding, especially on the highways, especially on turns. Uh, for me, when I did it on my Riker and I switched out the sway bar, I literally noticed it as I was reversing my bike out of the driveway. It was instant like, oh my God, now I know what everyone's talking about. So you don't realize how awesome it is until you actually swap it out, but don't take my word for it, do your own research. But when you decide you want one, I do sell them on my Etsy page. I will put the link right here so you can do it. You can find it as my Etsy page. I'll put a clickable link in the description section below. My sway bars are the same price as everyone else's sway bars, but I do benefit from it if you buy from me. And I offer free shipping. So if you're going to order, order for me. That's all. Okay. So this is the original sway bar. And I'm going to go, come over here and I'm going to open up the box. And I'm going to show you the new sway bar for Baharan. They look very similar, but there are small differences. So this is how your sway bar comes. It'll come with directions. He gives you two sets of directions. Make sure you're using the one that's right for your bike. So this is a 2021 Spider RT. So this is the direction we're using. Um, if you're anything like me, I do not do well with written directions. I need a visual. So that's what my video is for, okay? So now you have the Baja Ron sway bar. So it comes with everything you need. It comes with the bushings, it comes with the new um, links, the new spacers, a cool sticker to support Baharan. It also gives you a good pen, but I think Andy already stole the pen out of there. All right, so it's just well packaged. And I know you can't see this, but um, feel it, but the Baharan sway bar is, it, it's noticeably heavier. Um, it's not like two pounds heavier, but it's definitely heavier than the original sway bar and if you look if you zoom in a little bit you should be able to notice that the Baja Ron sway bar is definitely thicker um, in diameter than the original sway bar 
So it is, it is definitely feels like a more solid, it is a more solid product. The main difference is in the links. And I will show you, these are called Heim links. They're called dog bones. There's a lot of different names for these. But the major difference we have in these is if you notice, the movement on these is very easy. Um, and they're self-oiling. You don't ever have to worry about them getting wet or doing anything. They just move so nicely. And the craftsmanship, the material of this is just so solid. Once we take Scott's bike apart, I'll show you a comparison between the two links. But to me, the bar makes a huge difference and then the links make a huge difference as well because of being um, aircraft aluminum versus plastic, huge difference. So that being said, we're gonna get started. Now, a lot of people are hesitant to do that um, project. Click, click, click. A lot of people are hesitant. No, don't do that noise. <laughs> oh, Scott, don't make the noise. So he's like, what? Let me make it more. <laughs> All right, so in order for this project to work, you need to have your bike raised between 22 and 24 inches. Um, and the reason being is because you're going to be taking the sway bar. When you take off the bushing to everything out, you need to be able to take the sway bar out. And that's why you need the 24 inches. So it is very important to do that. A lot of people don't have a jack that will raise it up that high. And once I get onto the bike, I'll also show you a good jack point um, for raising the bike. But if it's, it's worth the investment, because if you bring this in and you ask um, your dealership to do it, they're gonna charge you between $300 to $500 to install the sway bar. So if you're watching this video, it's saving you that much money. So you may wanna invest in Jack so you can do this project yourself and, and anything else you need to get underneath the bike. It's nice to have the, the heavy Jack. If I find a good Jack stands, um, on Amazon, I'll put the link below that is sturdy enough to raise this weight and to raise it that high. But that being said, let's get started. Let's get into the bike and see what needs to get done. There is, I'm going to list all the tools that you need right here. And that's going to list everything that you need for your tools to get started. And also it's going to be in your directions from Baharan as well. So. We've got the bike raised 24 inches. We've got the jack underneath it, and we've also have it on the jack stands just to be extra, extra safe. So now I'm gonna, I've got my friend Ken. Say hi, Ken. Hi, Ken. <laughs> I've got Ken here um, filming me, and he's gonna show me, and then Scott's gonna come here. It's Scott's bike, so I'm gonna make him do a little bit of the work because, you know, I don't work for free, you know? Is it gonna be lunch at least, Ken, um, Scott? Yeah. He said yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So underneath here you have, I can actually grab the camera for a second. And I'm gonna show you what we've got underneath here. And so underneath your bike, you have this plate. So this is your sway bar. This is the original sway bar. This is the plastic links we were talking about. And this is your sway bar it goes all the way through. It comes out the other side over here. So what we're doing now, and this is your gas overflow hose. So that's interesting to know just in case. So while you're underneath here, you want to, there's push pins that you want to take out um, to have access to this panel because you need to, to take the bar out, you need to take this, it's called a cannel um, chamber right here. So you need to take this off as well as this one here. So in order to do that, you need to get access to this bolt. So it's helpful to take these off. So I'm gonna take a second and take these push pins off and then we're gonna go from there. And so as not to make the video um, hours long, I'm just gonna show you on, um, on one or two what I'm doing and then show you the next step. Move your finger so I can see what you're doing, okay. There's a pin right there. Yep, so there's a pin right here, there's a pin right here on both sides, and I'll show you what we're doing to access that area. So the pushpin is a two-piece pushpin system. 
Um, I highly recommend um, wearing uh, glasses, protective eye goggles while you're doing this because there is going to be plenty of dirt and debris that comes out of this. All right. So don't laugh at me with my protective goggles on, okay, guys? Sexy, right? But it's okay. I'm, I'm not doing this for sexy. I'm doing this for... <clears throat> That for that reason is why I'm doing it. So yeah, you definitely don't want to talk while you're doing it because then you'll end up eating the stuff as well. <laughs> My camera guy's backing up like he's gonna get on him. It's not gonna come. It's not as explosive. Ugh. Oh, I'm sorry. There's one more push pin here. So there's a one more push pin here. And. How are these glasses fogging up? So everything we're doing on this side, you're gonna also do on the other side. You're doing a great job, Ken. Thank you, you're gonna really like this. <laughs> you're gonna really like this video. <laughs> this video is a one and done, so if you're not doing it right this time. Uh... You're gonna have me under contract by the end of this video. <laughs> All right, so this one's coming out now. Okay. All right, so this push pin is out. And now there's gonna be a hinge right here. So it's gonna hinge forward. There's so much stuff that falls out. So definitely wanna wear goggles while you're doing some kind of protective eye because you're not getting in there. So you wanna just be careful. You could unscrew this probably better to do it but we did it <laughs> oh. all right so all you need is to be able to access in here um i'll show you what we're trying to access so, so all you're doing is being able you have to access this bolt in here so can you see where i'm pointing yep, towards yep yep so that's what you need that's why you need to take this off on both sides so now i'm going to quickly do this one as well while i'm here i'll fast I'm literally, I'm t I can taste dirt in my mouth. I'm crunching on dirt. Mm. All right, okay. So now we've got this all opened and we are ready to start disassembling our sway bar. This is the, this is the sway bar. Um, this is what it looks like underneath. So it starts here and it goes all the way through here. And then it comes and it goes right here. Scott, you ready to work? Sure. You guys heard it. He's going to work. All right, Scott, what are you handing me? What size? 10 millimeters. All right, so the first thing we're doing now is that that's for the, the 10 millimeter, millimeter is for the, Bushing. the bushings. Okay. And, well, and the candle stiffening bolt. Same. So, yes, um, one for the front one. Let, me, let me get in here one more time. So this is the the candle stiffener bolt is right here. That is the, the candle stiffener. So that needs to come out. And you can see that there is a, uh, where are we again? Right here. So this is what we needed to have That's access the to. That's the right. And then right here is, is the bolt. Yeah, that's a good point. So this is the bushing, the original bushing, and we're also replacing that as well. This piece right here is the bushing that we're replacing. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the, we'll do the bushings first. Yeah. All right, we'll do the bushings first. So the bushing is right here. You got that? Yep. So the bushing has a, a very long bolt that goes through it that starts here and goes to the other side. So this side of the bike is very easy to access uh, because there's nothing right here and allows you to kind of get in here. So you can put your hands in here and get a wrench in here and hold the, hold the bolt and undo it. This side, are you able to kind of see this side or you want me to grab it? You gotta grab it. So this side where the bushing is, the bolt is way in here. So in order to, you need like little girly fingers to kind of get in there to hold hold a, that 10 millimeter wrench in there, thank you, um, to hold it while unscrewing it from the other side. So this one is tough to get to, um, and it takes a little bit of finesse. We're gonna do this one first, just to kind of show you what I'm doing. All right. 
and you can't tell because this is in the way um, but don't you don't want to break this so um, we're getting in there on one side using the, the socket So here is the very long um, bolt that holds your bushings in place. Yes, we reuse these. The washer, here's the nuts, and here's the very long bolt holding the bushings in place. So keep, oh, let's keep all those together mm -hmm. nice and neat. So we want to be able to reuse them. The bushings are in there tight, 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 tight. So in order to make it loose, you need to go in there and and do the same thing to the um, the cannel stiffener, which would allow you to help you um, get access. That's that other bolt there, Beth? Yep. Yep. So Scott is right. When you uh, unscrew it, it, it gets loose and then you can easily drop on your face. So be very careful when you're undoing this. Again, a nice long bolt. Here is the stiffener. And be very careful because you don't want to lose the, uh, the bolt here inside. And here is the bolt. And it comes with a washer already on it. It's kind of, it's a one piece system. So what I'm going to do, just to make sure we don't confuse any of the pieces, I'm going to put it back together and have it all together. Um, and next, yeah, now, now the bushing is, is ready to go and that's it. And that's just, this is your bushing. Baharan supplies you with brand new bushing. So toss these. This side is almost done. We still need to take off the hind links, but before we do that, we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Action. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now that the bushings are out, we're now taking out the links, the heim links, the dog bones, whatever you want to call them, the links on the side, which connects everything. So we're using a 13 millimeter um, wrench to do this. So again, you need one holding one side of it and the other turning it. So I'm going to use this on this side. So, so you're just kind of making sure it's on there nice and tight, holding that back bolt in. And then now you are just turning these all around. And then once you've got it off pretty well, you should be able to undo the rest with your finger. Again, you're going to reuse these, so hold on to the screws. And the bolt comes out nice and easy. Good. And then I'm going to put this together again, because just to make sure we're keeping everything consistent and together so we know where everything is when we, when we take it out. And now the bottom one's out, and now let's take out the top one. And we just repeat the process. It's just kind of hard to get in these places. Let's see. <laughs> we're trying to do this before it starts pouring. Um, not that we're worried about getting wet, just for recording purposes, um, recording, God, it's like my Rhode Island accent comes out every once in a while. For recording purposes, we're trying to get this done before it gets too loud to uh, record. So now, obviously be careful when you take this bolt up because now your dog bone is gonna fall. And so you wanna make sure it doesn't fall on you. The link. So this is, so here we go. Scott, would you mind handing me a new link? So 
let's talk let me bend me back up a little bit or come out a little bit let's talk about the differences of, of the links so here is um here's the new one versus the old one so this is plastic i mean plastic um this is um I'm not gonna bang it because I don't want to ruin it, but this is all them next to each other. This is metal. Um, it's actually uh, aircraft aluminum that we're using. So if you notice, these are really hard. These joints in here are really stiff to move. Um, they don't. They just don't move. They do move, but not as flowy as these. These are just see how, see how easily they move. And then this, you mean you gotta use you gotta use some real strength to kind of God, and this one I can't even do. That this one I cannot move at all. But it's like so hard. So these are the plastic ones that come with it. And this, you know, is one of the many reasons you're looking to swap them out. Because the, the links is they are so much better. The bar is better. So this is what we're doing. Um, but in the meantime, we're gonna take off. The, um, the bar is like totally ready to come down. You can see the bars were almost done. Take with this part of the install, and so it's 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 ready to come out. We're gonna just finish up and take out this side. I should be able to do it from this position as well. All right, so we are, the bottom one is out. Okay, the bar just fell. Let me take out the top one. Okay, now, ta-da, everything is undone. And now you're gonna learn the reason why you have to have the bike up 24 inches. So. It takes some finesse to get this bar out. Um, let's see if I can. So, all right, so this is the reason why you need 24 inches. You see this? It's exactly the right. Um, the right angle because you need to get that angle to get um if you could see underneath there to get this the bar around the bottom part of the frame of the bike so this is your support piece this is where you're going to be doing your jack um is on this this is the frame of your bike that, where your jack point is and it needs to come around this turn and that's why you need the bike and that's why you need the bike at 24 inches <laughs> And if it's a little less than 24 inches, it looks like this. Um, <laughs> see, we probably did 23 and a half inches. <laughs> and so, let's see if we can. Yeah, 23 and a half inches works. Okay, so um, this is what you have. So this is the old sway bar. And then next, we're going to put in the new sway bar. Magic, here's the new sway bar. So you're gonna put it in the same way the other one came out. Um, so it is going to, you wanna snake it in there. Yeah, nice. Very, very nice. Now the sway bar, um, it doesn't have a specific direction. It, any any way you put it in, will, in terms of, it doesn't have a left and right side. You just put the sway bar in, and you're good to go. So the sway bar, we need to get over this piece here. There we go. Awesome. Okay. So next, we're gonna put the bushings on, and I've got my handy assistant Scott with the new bushings. Um, the bushings come together 
So it does not have um, a right and left. Either um, bushing will work on either side. The important part to remember is the opening parts, it's gonna be closed like this. So the opening parts of the bushing goes towards the bike. That's the only thing you need to remember with this. So it's gonna be that same um, bolt going through your old bushing, you're gonna reuse and use on this bushing. And the bushing is gonna go as close to the ends of the bar as possible. So it's gonna go, it's gonna go right between, um, oh, let, me, let me back this out. See this little wedge right here? Can you see this divot point right here? Are you able to see that part yeah, right yeah. there? So it's gonna, the bushing is gonna go between the bush, this part and that part. So it's gonna go at the very ends right here. So that's how you know at uh, the right point to do it. Now here's the, here's the thing. It is um, very, very hard to get in there. Thank you, Scott. So it is very hard to get in there. And they don't mention this on the directions, but there is a trick to it. I actually had to call Baharan's office last time, um, like on like a Sunday night. And um, it was, I spoke to Dylan and I spoke to Daniel and Daniel was like super, super helpful. So thank you very much, Daniel. Um, and he taught me a trick to getting this on because it, it really is pressure fitted in there. So in order to get it on, you actually need, you know, a couple of flathead screwdrivers. I'm not at the right angle to put it on. I'm going to have Scott do it from his angle. So you're just getting, uh, you want to do it from your side, Scott? Because I'm under the bike, so it's a little bit tougher. Um, don't be afraid to use a little bit of force to knock this in um, to make sure it's in there nice and solid. This corner's got to go in, then we wedge this corner. Now go ahead and tap the bottom of it. Yep, it's going in. Hold on. The hole in the bushing needs to line up with this right here. Um, so this, this hole in the bushing is going to line up with this hole here. Um, and in order to do that, we need to use a flat head screwdriver and wedge it in there. Get that front corner in. Then I use the screwdriver to, to squeeze it together. We did use some, <laughs> we used something to push it though, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, right, hang on. Hang on. Don't, don't, don't put my hands in there. So, uh, Okay, I feel I like, really I feel like you're going to drop that on my face. I'm not going to hold drop it? it on your face. Well, now I need to be able to hit it. Hit it. Oh, I can't All right. That. Well, how is someone going to do this? They need five hands to do this? <laughs> I don't know who's holding it. All right, let me, here, let me, here, I, let me I do, it. I do it. I think I can do it. I can do it. Okay, ready? So what we're using is um, the end of a, a socket. So we've got a screwdriver in here, wedging this together. I mean, it's a tight fit. There's no question about it. So let's see if this works. Are you able to get in there? There we go. That, that did something. There okay. we go. Don't be shy. Just hit it. I know. My finger. Well, I got fingers to, to worry about. Don't grow all the fingers. <laughs> all right, that's perfect. All right. Ah, see, now it's perfect. Let's see. Right. Did I get it in the right? Did I get it in the right hole? Is it lined up? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I, don't, I won't know until I... We'll fix it with the bolt. So, yeah. All right, so perfect. Show how where it went into. So it went into... See how perfectly it fits now? And that's exactly where it's supposed to be. Um, and now we still have access to, to this. But now we're going to put it in on this side as well. But that's the trick is using a, a wedge. Now that the bushing is in its place, we're going to put the, the bolt back in. So the bolt's going to go in through this side. So it's kind of hard to tell through here, but the, there's a hole right here. Can you see that hole? Yep. There's a hole right here that lines up with, uh, with the bushing. So you slide the bolt through there, just the opposite of what we did when we were um, putting it on the other way. And then you're going to put the fender washer, which is this, um, on next. And then you're going to put the, the bolt, the... Um, the nut on 
And now you're just gonna just finger tighten this. You don't want to you don't want to tighten anything up too much right now because you still want some wiggle room. So I'm just gonna fin finger tighten this. And now we're gonna put um, the next one on on the other side. All right. So oh, there's light and everything. So here's a different uh, camera angle for um, to get to show you how to get this bushing on. All right. So um, the bushing is very hard to get in there. So we have a screwdriver putting pressure on this, and then now we have the back of a socket, and I'm gonna hold the socket, and then we're gonna knock this in. I'm, I'm just so sorry, such at a bad angle to be knocking. <laughs> it's not right. It should go any easier than that. Yeah. Oh, there you go, there you go. Oh, okay, oh. hands, hands. You got another hand. Hands, all right, here you go. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put way down here. See, so do it again, just because so, it's just to show how easy it is. Yeah, look how nice that is. Um, and then now we just want to make sure it's lined up. And we're we've got uh, the bolt here. All right, let's make sure it's lined up. So yeah, this is the awkward one. So let's see if it's, uh, no, not even close. So now I'm just moving this around to get it into the right spot. Yeah, there you go. Yep, boom. So you just need to wiggle it around to get the bolt in the right way. And now we've got the fender washer. Goes on first. So this is where you need the little girly hands to get this on there, right? Because you're kind of, it's super annoying as I just dropped it in there. So you got to have little fingers to get in there. Because you have limited space right here because of this. And then, again, I'm just going to finger tighten right now. And we're not going to tighten anything yet because we still need to put the, um, the bar back here. Um, candle stiffener on there so this is my least favorite one this is my least favorite side because it is uh, it's just awkward to get to all right so it's finger tightened so the next thing we're gonna do is put on the candle stiffeners which are thank you and what it is. Hmm? So here's the uh, the yeah, candle stiffer, and that's gonna go right here. And you can tell where it goes because there's a perfect uh, hole right there for it. All right. So now that the bushings are are finger tightened on, now the next thing we're gonna do is add the candle stiffener rod which goes in this hole here. There's two holes. There's one here um, and there's one here. So you want to use the one closest to the bushing. So it's gonna, there's a hole here and then you could feel there's a hole on this side. So that's where we're working with. So you're gonna put your, uh, put it on like that and then we're gonna put the, the bolt through there. And it comes right out the other side and Oh. What did I do with the? Here it is. All right, there you go. And then now we're gonna finger tie this piece on. And again, this is the awkward, yucky side of things because it is really hard to kind of get in there. And again, we're just gonna finger tighten it and go back with the correct um, millimeter socket and tighten everything. So we put both of these on, um, these stiffeners, one, two. This side is, uh, is much easier because you have room to work. So you have this area to kind of get your hands in. But these are both on, everything is finger tightened. You have to remember to go back and tighten everything up. And now the last part is to add the links. And there is a trick to that as well. Now that we're ready to add the links, we're going to put the spacers on the bearings. And 
the space if you don't there's a trick to doing it so you don't lose the spacers in your bike and i promise you if you don't do this trick you will lose the spacers so trust me i've done it enough to know that this is a good trick to use so what we're going to do is we're going to put a little tiny bit of super glue um the tapered my hands are so gross right now the tapered side is going to go on the bearing so it's going to go like that so you can imagine how difficult that is to kind of hold it in place and everything while you're doing it. So we're gonna put a little bit of super glue on it and we're gonna do it on all four, so it's gonna be four on all four spacers. And Scott wants to do the little dab. You just want just enough to kind of hold it in place there. So you want to do this to both of your end links. It's best not to super glue your finger to the end link. As much as I love Baharan, I don't want to be connected to him on a long-term basis, you know? You know what I'm saying, right, Scott? Yeah. And now we're adding the links. The last and the important, most important part of the puzzle here. So the links are gonna go Baharan name out. I don't know if that's important or not, but I just, you know, that's how I like it. And he supplies you with two new bolts. There's gonna be four bolts that you need total. So here's the four bolts that came off of the original bolts. Two of them you're tossing. Two of them you're keeping. Now this is the important part. The new bolts that Ron gave you, they're go they keep rolling away. They're going on the bottom of the link. So when you're when you're installing the links, the old the old one is going on top, and then the new one is going on the bottom. And the reason being is the new bar is wider, slightly slightly bigger in diameter, so you need the bigger bolts. Okay? Let's get in there and put one on, and I'll show you how it's done. And you already have the spacers glued on. Yes, and the spacers are already glued on. Thank you, Ken. See how nice they are? So you don't have to worry about the spaces. Yeah, let me take a shot of those. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's get on this side. Now, the direction of the bar is going to be completely horizontal. So, so the bar moves. You want the bar horizontal. That's how it's going to all stay together. And let's see. All right, so we're gonna do the top one first. So the top one is the original one that came off the bike. And it's gonna go in between here. Line it up. All right, so these are the 13 millimeter. Um, all right, and then um, so the washer um, is attached to it, and the washer side, the bolt, the washer side is going to go against the um and again we're finger tightening everything we're going to go back and tightening everything back up after it's done it's only finger tightening. so can you see um can you see like what i'm pointing to right here yep you're able to see that yep. okay so that's what we're doing and then now we're going to use the new pretty baharam one and now we're going to attach it and then really this is, um, we're gonna do the same exact thing to the other side. And then we are done. How cool is that? And uh, now you can see the appreciation of having those washers on there. It makes it so much easier. Again, the tapered side in. 
All right. I'm trying to hurry. It's a huge storm coming in. It's going to get super loud and super dark really fast. And let there be light. Oh, she's just like that. Oh. It is a storm. <laughs> this is what we were trying to avoid. Do you think your bike's going to flip over? All right, so we're gonna put the link on this side. And a, the original link, the original bolt goes on top. Oh, that went in nicely. And now we're gonna put on the, again, we're just gonna finger tighten everything right now. We're gonna put this one through here. The longer one on, on the brand new shiny long one goes at the longer one goes on the bottom. Be very careful not to lose your washers. Even if you super glue them, there's a good chance they might come off too. So be careful with that. All right, now this is the last piece to the puzzle. And then we're just gonna tighten everything and put everything back together again and we're done. Hopefully this saved you guys some money to avoid having to bring it to a dealership. This is having trouble going through as well. Okay, so sometimes this bolt has trouble getting in because um, the washer is a little bit tight. So don't be afraid to gently tap it in a little bit. And then that way you can get, um, you can get the bolt to go through all the way. Because without the bowl going through, you won't be able to get your washer on. So you just need to be able to tap it in a little bit to get access to... <laughs> I almost dropped it on myself. To be able to get on here. So once this is on, then you can let your wrench do the rest of the hard work. Speaking of, my wrench. Nice. Um, I need a second wrench. This is the 13 millimeter. So you need one for holding and... One for turning. It's very important to remember to go back to tighten everything. It's easy to forget. But we're gonna that's tight, we have to go back and do the other one. We also have to tighten up the the bushings and then put this piece back on. And and then we're done. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten everything up. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and tighten everything up. And then I'm gonna have the owner, um, Andy, I'm gonna have her ride it and um, when it stops raining and get you her first impression of the new sway bar. So um, everything else, you mean you get you put your push pins back, tighten up your bushings, and you are literally done. Um, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'll be back in a little bit when it stops raining and we'll lower it, take it off the jacks and have the owner test it out and give her her completely unbiased impression of the sway bar. So hopefully after all this work, she likes it, but you know, we'll, we'll see what she says. I'll see you in a little bit. All right, so very important. This should be very tight, um, all the bolts, but be aware these should move that's part of the beauty of this. See how, how freely they move? That is correct. They should not be stiff. They should have movement in them, even when these are tight. And this is what the finished product is gonna look like. The finished sway bar. We've got new bushings, new um, links, There we go. Everything's nice and tight. These should not, you know these are tight when they do not spin. They should not move at all. That's how you know these are tight. They should be very solid on there. Perfect. Action. All right, so Andy, now you might recognize her from, we did a whole video with her and her husband, Scott. 
on the how to travel with dogs. How to travel with dogs. So this is like she gets multi multi time with uh, with me. So no. We just spent, how long do you think it took, Scott? A couple, of, without all the interruption stuff, you think it was like a two hour install? Probably could have done an hour and a half. An hour and a half, two hour install. So, a lot of time and love went into this, okay? Don't laugh, yeah. don't laugh. She's one of my favorite people. <laughs> okay, so my question to you now, I want you to give, no, this is very important, I want you to test it out. She has not ridden the bike with the new sway bar on it. So I want you to take it out, take it around the block, you know, go two-wheeling a little bit, you know, and like handle, get, get into those cars. And I want you to tell me if you think you notice a difference in the sway bar. So this is a 100% honest review. There's no, I'm not bribing you or anything. I want people to know without any kind of influence from me if you think this install is worth it. Yeah. Two and a half hours. No, I'm just kidding. No, seriously, like, I want to know your honest opinion of what, what you think it is. So take it out, show us what it's all about, and then come back and I'll get your reaction when you come back. Cool. So go, enjoy, be safe. My hair wouldn't have gotten wet. And <laughs> always, always right. So just went around the block yeah. in her neighborhood. All right, first impressions, go. <clears throat> the bike felt more solid when I was turning. Not, not that I ever, not that I was ever on two wheels like when I was turning, but this way when I felt like, I felt like the tires were securely on the ground and I didn't have to lean as much to keep me there, if that makes sense. It felt more stable. Did you, in terms of, a, did you notice a huge difference or a little difference? It's kind of hard to tell just driving around the block and there's not very many turns, so... I mean, I felt a difference. But don't forget, some people that had them installed in North Carolina went on long rides right, after that right. until they drag, drag it. Drag exactly. It, right. So I didn't have that experience. But you definitely noticed the difference. Oh, no, I, I definitely noticed a difference. It definitely feels... The steering doesn't feel as loose like when I'm going down the road. Right, right. And then when I turn the corners, it feels more solid. And Scott, what about you? Because you, you, we just put on your bike as well, like, two weeks ago. Yeah, no, I had the same experience. The the, the bike, like Andrea said, you know, we'd be on the highway and, and, uh, you can go inside. You, you, no, it's okay. On the highway, we feel the ruts or the crown in the, in the lane right. and stuff would move the bike around. And I notice it moves a lot less now. There's not as much float in the steering. Right. Um, I absolutely feel much better on ramps, off ramps on the highway. I can go faster and, and I feel like I've got a lot better control. Right. It's hard to explain though, right? Like the difference it is it's a, it's a very hard thing to explain but it's like when you're on it you notice immediately for me i know and the riker i noticed immediately the difference um do you feel like you noticed it immediately i noticed like, it immediately in fact my, my son had his put on at the event in north carolina right. and i thought i don't need it and he kept telling me oh it's going to be this it's going to be this and i didn't right. i finally put it on and it was everything he said it would be and more so that's awesome no it's, it's good very okay. cool all right that's it that's your install for the 2021 RT, and it is my pleasure, and hopefully you guys learned a lot. Hopefully you guys can do this yourself. Don't be afraid to try it, and um, save you guys some money. That's it. Uh, welcome to Spider Rides. I hope to have a lot more installs, oil changes, things like that. Um, now that I have some good friends that have spiders, I plan to do a lot of work on their bikes and, uh, and bring it to you. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Much more to come. And I'll see you later. Bye, everybody.